fellow travelers to the 100th episode special. It's This is an extra special. I mean, I can't even begin to explain how special I feel like this episode is going to be episode for you guys. Uh, yeah, I know, I'm trying not to say anything. I mean, if you've seen the thumbnail, you know what's up. Uh, but we are just so excited to have you guys and to celebrate you, the travelers, the listeners, the people that are hanging out with us for a hundred episodes, almost a hundred hours yeah. of your your time. That is bunch insane. Of, bunch of lunatics, I'm, honestly. Yeah, right. I, I'm Russell Tyndall, as you know, one of your co-hosts, and with me as always is uh, DJ, DJ and Eddie P. P. Yes. Uh, for anyone who is joining us for the first time, because I feel like we may get a couple of people doing that, um, which is kind of a weird episode to join for the first time. To be honest, we normally break down the episodes entirely and just talk about it and tangent a ton and uh i've never seen the show before ned it's his you know six or seven time through it and yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna hang out and talk about adventure time for you know a little while and and celebrate 100 episodes ned do you feel well first off what are you drinking man i am drinking a nice red burgundy that i have been saving okay. for a very special occasion today it feels, um, so 100th it feels episode, appropriate. It feels very appropriate. It is very delicious, very earthy, very smoky. It feels very, fantastic. I hate to that. Be <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man. Well, so you you seem to have a swagger about you. Has something changed? Do you do you feel like you're celebrating 100 episodes in any special way? What what's I, different about you? I mean, I feel like uh, maybe just the confidence of public speaking has gone up okay. a lot. Honestly, that's and, great. Maybe a hundred bottles of wine and a hundred whiskeys later from every episode. Like where that's that's where we're at right now. Um, the Never Ending Adventure podcast does not advocate for excessive drinking. I just want to go ahead Absolutely. and say that we just happen to be drinking sometimes when we're recording. Anyways, uh, man, you know, I I feel it personally. I feel a little bit like I, I went skydiving, you know, and, and then I went Rocky Mountain climbing, and of course, I, I did two point seven seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu. I, I don't know if I told you is about that, all that. Is that Toby, Toby Keith? That no, a, I don't no. know what you're talking about. It may be, uh, oh gosh, I can't even remember his name. I, dude, this has been a joke, a reoccurring joke on this podcast, and I can never, Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw, uh, that's it. Tim McGraw, yeah. But, you know, so I, I realized we have to keep recording because truly what I want is to be a, a big rock star, like living in hilltop houses and driving 50 cars. And, and anyways, enough stupid music references the songs that I don't like. Um, yeah, Let, let's get into this, man. Usually when we have a guest, we ask them to bring a DJ name, but it just didn't feel appropriate because I, I don't like my DJ name. Rusty is the worst <laughs> thing ever. Rusty is erosion and Russ space T is what I settled on. And you, of course, DJ Nettie P from your college frat party dj days <laughs> but i think we should we should go with the uh, vampire names this time around how do you feel about that i could do i could do a good vampire special name i think i mean i could go with count nedula but that sounds like very i, I love know, it like cliche i guess i love it no count nedula what like on ice like the uh yeah. it's like dracula <laughs> Or a box yeah. of cereal, I guess. Kind of what okay. that sounds like. What is it? Fairly Odd Parents, the uh, Crash Nebula. That's what it is. Yeah. That mix up. I love that. Um, I thought of mine. Mine could be more, more B Russ. Um, just because, you know, Jared Leto is not going to be in the next film. So let me let me take it control and I'll, I'll be more B Russ instead. Right, well, um, that means we have to figure out if, if we've got vampire names, do we have a, a true vampire name for our special guest? I, I think she comes with one, maybe. I maybe mean, so. let's. You want to introduce her? I mean, or she could introduce herself. I mean, it's yeah. She she needs no introductions on. I this don't podcast, even know what to say. Honestly. Yeah. Well, she has a stage name, and it's Marceline the Vampire Queen. Oh, oh my yeah. god! There we go. That's <laughs> we have y'all. We've got Olivia Olson joining us today on the podcast. We are so freaking pumped up because literally. Olivia, I think if the, I had a hard time getting Russell into this show in the first place. Um, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, no he's doubt. A, he's a big anime guy. He's a big, like, you know, shows that have, like, big stories. And I had to just, like, constantly convince him to be, like, this, ep like, it, it gets deeper. The characters get good. He hit that first Marceline episode. And I feel like he was sold. And it, it changed your life. Yeah. I, changed I, your I, life. If it did, may have changed my life. Well, certainly... 
this podcast has uh, adapted my life in many ways. I'm I'm not doing what I was doing creatively at the time anymore, and this has become such a bigger part of it. But it's Here been you amazing, guys are man. with a so hundred episodes. <laughs> I know that's yeah. crazy. So, Congratulations and thank you for having um, me on the special occasion. No, no, yes, thank you. Of I course. mean, thank you for joining us and. And like I said, like well, like Russell said too, like yeah, we typically just will do a breakdown of an episode, talk about like deep thoughts, and and that's a really big, I think, aspect of of where we like to go with the show is like, yeah, you can always just break down beginning to the end of the episode, what happened. Let's just talk about it. But we try to get into like the human psyche, the deep thoughts, like really, where the writers were trying to go with this kind of stuff. So I'm excited to hear just from from your perspective with some deep thoughts and. Uh, character development and yeah. your thoughts on the show as well of like do you wish things had gone different ways like <laughs> your your opinion and i feel like your thought process um just being one of the characters that has the deepest plot lines um exactly, that i think most people yeah. got emotionally connected to as well i was gonna say we could we could have a whole podcast just based on the backstory of like each character in this show because it's so in-depth for for an animated series that like I, I never saw it coming and I didn't think it was going to be this big of a, a thing and big of a storyline. So let's, let's dive into it. What do you yeah, got well, for me? <laughs> well, I was, that's a great, I mean, I think that's a great segue of just kind of yeah. you talking about that. Like, was there a certain point? I mean, when you started, obviously it was just like, this is a great show. It's a cartoon show and I've got a gig voice acting. Was there like a turning point where all of a sudden you're like, I'm, part of this kind of like bigger lore and bigger fan base where you were starting to go to comic cons people were like getting amped up and things like that yeah i don't think any of us knew what we were really getting into um like you said it's just like you book a gig and you start working on the show and one thing that all of us um, in the main cast said very very early on when we were recording the first season was like we didn't really understand <laughs> adventure time like solely based on the dialogue that they were giving us because especially in season one I think a lot of um you know a lot of the dialogue was like them saying like oh yeah I'm totally math and like things like this and we're like what does this even mean you know um and all of us would kind of roll our eyes and laugh and be like I don't even know what I'm saying but okay and we would ask the the director constantly like what what do we what do you mean by this what's the context of me saying this and like we would always have to ask over and over and over like wh what are we even saying here and then I think once the first season actually came out and we saw how they were going about it mixing this quirky dialogue with this art style and the way that they were telling the stories we were like oh this is this is different. This is something like at first we didn't think it was going to work, but once we kind of saw it all come together, we were like, okay, I see Started what's going on it. here. Yeah. And, and I think, I think we have something really kind of special here. So. And I think that's been my journey with this show a little bit as well. And part of why Ned was saying it took so long to convince me to watch this. I was watching other cartoons and things, you know, mm -hmm. we were, in high school when this came out. We weren't yeah. necessarily the target audience for Adventure Time. And Ned even found it retroactively in college, right? And fell yeah. deeply in love with it. So the beauty of this show for me as someone who has only seen up to season four at this point, as we slowly walk two years later into oh, a, wow. a show, which is really weird, right? Like I've spent two years talking about a show I haven't finished yet. So um, you're kind of at the turning point to the series i feel I'm, like i'm falling in love with it it's I, great mm -hmm. i, I feel I like around season three season four is when they really kind of started doubling down on like the long format story of like what's going on with these characters and in, in season one it, it felt more like one-offs um rather than mm -hmm. all of the little easter eggy things and it and did the, it and feels iconic chaos. though right yeah that first season is really iconic. And mm -hmm. maybe it's because that's when you first discover it, when we were all like on this, oh, Cartoon Network and Cartoon Network's coming back and Adventure Time's leading the way mm -hmm. in, in such a, a, a major way. Those episodes are, I had seen a few of them back in the day because my sister loves the show, but I had had never personally like ventured past that because the comedy wasn't for me. The comedy was 
off-putting and it was faster paced than anything that had been mm-hmm. in the past. And it inspired this fast paced comedy style that I think Cartoon Network really found a way to excel at in the like early 2010 to 2015. Totally. They, followed, they, they followed up Adventure Time with regular show, which just like, again, like just, mm-hmm. I think caught on faster than Adventure. I don't know if it's as popular, but I mean, it, it caught that whole, you know, yeah. mentality, the humor style, the dialogue style as well, too. Did did the love for Adventure Time come over time for you as well? Like, because I know we talked a little bit before this recording about how when you're a, a voiceover artist, you you talk for a little bit, you record, and then like you said, two years later, maybe mm-hmm. the episodes start to come out after animation and all that is getting done. And then you are discovering, oh, there's this niche audience oh my gosh, this niche audience is becoming, it's like a cult classic and then it's getting bigger and bigger. At what point did you, for you personally go, oh, I actually like, I love that I'm a part of, like, I love this. I love that I'm a part of this. This feels like home all of a sudden. Yeah, the the first time that we kind of all collectively saw that we were super a part of something, because I think there is a disconnect with voice actors. Like we don't get recognized We don't have people sort of associating our face with like, you know, what we do. And and I love that side of it. Um, But when we went to our first Comic-Con and had our big panel there and like to see this packed room and Cartoon Network had given everybody in the audience like a a fin cap, right? (laughs) And to just see a sea of people with these little like white bear hats on their head, um, we were just like, oh my gosh, like we had no idea how crazed people were about it until that moment. Wow. We were like, this is crazy. And and hearing people and like doing the QA like in that moment was just wild too, because we didn't see people like catching on and having all these like in-depth questions about, oh, what does this mean? And what does that mean? And like we were just kind of really blown away by that because that was the first time we had experienced knowing what we were a part of, I think. That's amazing. Yeah, like, what yeah. at the, at what you did how... know is they all had beautiful hair underneath those hats. Had they <laughs> taken them off, you would have been blown away. Exactly. <laughs> well, Blowing how, in the wind. <laughs> how far along did you, say, did you say that was? Was that kind of still kind of like post season one, like oh while y'all were gosh. getting into season? Or was that kind of like where what you're saying about this season where it was like where that lore starts getting really deep? I don't know. I, like my memory is so bad. Yeah, <laughs> I, did, I mean, that was so you, year, so many years did, ago, right? I know. Ten years of the show too. So like, I would that, literally have to like, you. I would have to look on my phone, like in my my photos, to be like, when was that? <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm going to do because I'm like, maybe that'll give us uh, an idea. Let me see, San Diego Convention Center. <laughs> Oh, and, and so it was at it was at San Diego Comic Con too. Yeah, yeah, was like, yeah. It was, like oh, that, wow. it, was, it was the big one. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that must have been twenty thirteen. So that was no, maybe it was the year before that. Here I am with Donald Glover. <laughs> oh gosh, who is, that was so, uh, yeah, those the, the community yeah. days with Donald Glover too. Well, yeah, Donald Glover plays uh, Marshall Lee, right? Yeah, He's... I don't think it must have been the year before that, and I don't think I okay. have that in my phone because I'm like, it, by the time Fiona and Cake was announced, that was like we had already had a little bit of a yeah, we had our chops already. <laughs> oh, we, oh, yeah, we were, tried you to were do like, a this little... is already. Yeah. Don't change for me. We <laughs> tried to do a Fiona and Cake special on the Never Ending Adventure podcast where we had our girl, my girlfriend and Ned's wife come on and record for us, trying to oh my trick gosh. the audience a little bit. And then at the end, <laughs> we tried to play it off like it was scripted the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> How did that, that go fun. over? Do, do your guys' girls, do they watch the show? You said that um, yours is a big fan of it. Yeah, yeah. My my girlfriend watches a lot of times with me and then we'll discuss, you know, beforehand because she's a lot more into like Roman and Greek like mythos and, and all that stuff. So she oh, can cool. bring that element to it and, yeah, and certainly too. is also artistic in her own ways. Right. So it's great to have. And also who wants, you know, I think having like more than just a two, like a masculine presence on the show is nice to have the perspective of 
like a, a female as well. You know, it's nice to mix it up in, in my mind and keeps it a little bit fresh. So we tried to do that. Something I love about the show is like how all of the, I, I can't even call them kingdoms. It's weird that they call them kingdoms because they're all ran by princesses. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've talked a lot about yeah. how some of the kingdoms are like, oh, it's uh, a garbage hole, you know, and it's <laughs> yeah. a breakfast kingdom inside of a pit, you know. Yeah, like, it's like what? Yeah. Ra- Raggedy Princess's kingdom is just the the dump yard. Like, uh, yeah. what I qualifies? Love I love that. What qualifies for being a princess? You know, like you're. It, you're it seems the pretty low queen. level entry. Yeah, I am the only <laughs> yeah. queen. I am the only queen. But I think that that's literally Marceline just taking on that name ironically because she killed all the vampires oops spoiler sorry oh shoot, <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> sorry. Oh, shoot. What? No, i feel like i feel like russell knowing that there was a whole series of like called stakes about vampires no what i had no show, idea so I, I had no idea well, okay. well as you could see leading so sorry but as you could see kind of like leading up to it she's the only vampire around ever so it's like that's true it's like how come she doesn't have vampire friends <laughs> huh that's so weird i i also am so excited to find out how she becomes a vampire right is it like through her father i don't know i just want to know all, everything about my i family. almost spoiled it all for you <laughs> no, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna mean, shut you're, up <laughs> you're the one who has credit if, if you spoil anything like there's nothing that we are oh. worried about you spoiling too much besides I don't know, maybe some big like bomb drops. But the other thing is like we're we're on social media a lot. So he also Russell does know a lot about like Phoebe and Marceline's relationship and how that's developing. Okay. And um, I mean, even us. That would have been a bigger four, spoiler for you oh, yeah. <laughs> if I had. Well, I mean, that's going the, back I'm your in, father, uh, you know, of of Adventure Time. You yeah. can't avoid that one. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is is well, even retroactively going back through it, like they they gave the hints about it so early mm-hmm. on, and that was one of my questions for you is like they had so much uh, tension between PB and Marceline, starting in, really in uh, season two when they they write the song together to open the door for the door lord. Yeah, um, that's a, that's a huge moment, and you start to see that tension now when you were acting in those did they give you any sort of hint or did you guys pick up on of like hey why are y'all like making (laughs) me and pb's character like like hate each other or Mm -hmm. did did you pick up on that early on or did that not happen until it was like very obvious yeah no i was like so naive and clueless to that uh during the what was missing episode um that didn't cross hinden or i's mind ever um when we were doing that we just thought that they had this like you know good girl bad girl rivalry type of thing i mean they're these two extreme archetypes of of uh women right and it's like of course they're not gonna see eye to eye one is like very by the books and very prim and proper and the other is like you know (laughs) So I didn't it's see that. Probably fun that you got to be the rat one yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> um, but no, like we didn't pick up on it at all. Um, I only ever really found out about it a when people started like when the episode came out and everybody started tweeting like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" Like they totally dated, and we're like, "What?" Like I didn't pick up on that. Um, but as we were when me and my dad were working on some of the books, um, that's when I was told that, oh my he's, God. He's got it right there. <laughs> Amazing. <I> do, yes. <laughs> the Adventure Time Encyclopedia, which I actually have never opened this book. I got it <laughs> from a friend right when we started this podcast. And I said, I, this has spoilers. Like, it's, I can't it's the read spoiler this. Book, yeah. Well, I think <laughs> so it... I, it probably came out around season four or five. So you could, okay. you could read it soon. I, I think. I'll um, have to look into that. It's, it's written by, uh, a my dad. Martin Olson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the funny thing with that, if you, if you don't want to open it yet, but you could kind of peek in there. Um, my real handwriting is all throughout the book because my dad didn't know anything like really about the show. Uh, when he was writing this book so he would constantly be calling me up to be like is this true is this true like 
And I'm like, you're so annoying. Like, just watch the show because I don't have time for this. And we kind of ca- we came up with this gag. We're like, well, Hunson Ab- Abadir is like an idiot, right? So why not have him be incorrect for like most of the stuff in here is like <laughs> yeah. not not accurate at all. And then we'll have Marceline go in and be like, dad, that's not true. And like, oh, so you right. have your handwriting, like Xing out things. Mm-hmm. in the totally. Yeah. Correcting. All right. And that's like literally, I can see it. It, it literally sparked from my dad, like sending me stuff and being like, oh, can you fact check this for me? And I'm like, nope, nope, nope. This is not right. And then we're like, we should just actually leave this in. That's kind of hilarious. That's amazing. <laughs> so, and it gives the book a tone. Like, anyways, yeah, that's yeah, very well, cool. So, I, I, I'll have did, to read it. How did the book, did was, was your dad commissioned by Cartoon Network to be like, hey, start working on this? Or was this like a passion project of you guys? So, so Penn, um, when he hired my dad to play Abadir, um, he did so because, well, A, he's my dad, but... Um, he had read my dad has a book called the encyclopedia of hell. That's a similar format book. It's a, an encyclopedia, uh, by the devil, uh, who Hudson and Abadir essentially is. And like Penn read this book and loved it. And for whatever reason, my dad has always likened himself to the devil that sounds so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this makes him the perfect Hudson and Abadir because of any character in Adventure Time, that is more like a hellscape in hell than yeah. the land of the dead, than whatever, you know, totally, weird totally. universe the Orgolorg mm. is coming from. Like, <laughs> well, so, hopefully, hopefully your dad isn't truly like Hudson Abadir. I mean, Ned <laughs> is constantly talking about how a major theme of Adventure Time is is bad father figures and, and bad mm-hmm. parents, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm hoping it's it's only in <laughs> his desire to write books like this that he is like yeah. the devil. I know. So that just instantly when Penn knew who he wanted to like cast as this devil character, he was like, oh, Martin has already done this really funny satirical take that he thinks would work really well for Adventure Time. And because he liked that book so much, he was like, let's kind of do the same thing, but instead of the Encyclopedia of Hell, let's have it be, you know, the Encyclopedia of Ooh, you know? So um, that's that's how that happened. It was yeah, solely solely off of the, off of my dad's original book that, that Penn so just liked. It wasn't you coming into the studio one day and being like, my dad ate my fries. Like, oh, I hate him so much. Make him the devil on your show. I'm just kidding. I, I had to. I had to at some point. Bad, bad Adventure Time joke. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to. My dad actually did a worse thing than eat my fries in high school. I like had baked my friend a cake for their birthday to bring to school. And like I woke up the next morning and there was a big slice out of the corner <laughs> <laughs> that he ate. And I'm like, oh, what? And I literally iced it too to have it say like, happy birthday, so-and-so. And I'm like, oh, no. what makes you think? I think he came home drunk and like, <laughs> was like oh, this oh, like this cake. In the corner. <laughs> I'm like, well, sorry, that's friend. That's so funny. <laughs> well, actually, well, I love that because that that's such like, I mean, people that like, I know our fans, we love hearing that whole like, Olivia and Marceline and here are the parallels of like the characters <laughs> to the real person as well but well one of our big ones Ed because I'm always curious like like again with Marceline being such an awesome complex character um and your voice acting behind that's fantastic in, in a Thank sense you. that it's so believable and it so feels like who you are did the writers ever like lean on you and say hey like what would Marceline like we're writing this episode we're doing something did they ever like lean on you and be like, what would Marceline, like you and being Marceline now, like, what would you, re- how would you react? What would you do? Did they ever lean on you for that or? Well, I mean, they definitely always give us as actors, like the go ahead to do our, our thing and do our take straight off the bat. So the way that the reporting process works is like, obviously the dialogue's already written by the time we get there. Mm-hmm. So they're not looking to us to be like, where do you think Marceline should go? Oh, they have a, they have plenty of talented, talented script writers and storyboarders. But, um, you know, they do always kind of give us that moment to have at it. And I will say one thing about everybody who is 
cast in this show. It is, everyone is really, really close to their character in a sense. Like the way that we kind of are is the way that our characters are. And like the way that we interact with one another is very much that way too, if that makes sense. I mean, that's that's so like, like fills my heart to hear that because that's how you feel like, again, mm -hmm when you come up to like season nine of the show, you're just like, you feel connected with the characters. Yeah. And I'm so glad that again, that by that point you were like that, that we were just acting as ourselves mm -hmm. just behind a cartoon character. And I, I would, think that's, yeah. yeah. I would say that, you know, a lot of the times, especially with Marceline, because there was that added dynamic of like me and my dad playing father and daughter and all that, like, a lot of her backstory is in a way similar to my own. And so I think it was sometimes drawn on inspiration a little bit, but, but for the most part, of course, it's like there's a thousand years of all this stuff and demonic and vampiric undertones and none <laughs> of that like <laughs> pertains to, to my Olivia's real life. telling us that she's half demon right yeah. now. So that's pretty much what she's saying. I mean, it almost sounds like you might be more peppermint butler like than you're leading on. You got like secret connections that we just don't even know about. Or am I, <laughs> am I, I might be reading it. I'm projecting. That's what I'm doing. Sorry. I, I'm projecting my own personal I connections. I can't speak on that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. They would be, that's they amazing. would be upset. <laughs> well, do you well, have, okay. On this show, we have a segment and I think we mentioned it to you. Not, I mean, before this, theoretically speaking, it's often it's just me and Ned and a lot of times me being the one who has no idea what's going on in the show, mm -hmm. theorizing about the future, where it's going, where it's leading, something goofy. Do you have any personal canon or personal theories about Adventure Time that may not have ever come to light or that you just feel like this is what I believe <laughs> is the case for your character or another character or the, the lore? And it could be spoilers. I'm, I'm okay yeah. with that. Well, I think I think maybe I should go ahead and answer. For some reason, it keep it like resurfaces every once in a while. But I keep getting tagged on Twitter of people being like, "Is this true? Is Marceline black?" And I'm like, "Yes, yes, she's she's a mixed race queen, just like me." So well, that, I, that, I'm that, gonna that, put that's the amazing. cannon on that. The, the true <laughs> fans would know her mom, who's sure. obviously black in the show too. So like that's. It's a funny thing why people will, like would ask that if they were like if they were true fans, honestly. Well, people like just debate back and forth because it's like, well, Rebecca Sugar voiced her, but Olivia's black and Donald Glover's black. It's just like, <laughs> you know what? Let's just say, <laughs> wow. Let's just say yes. I'm I'm stapling her as she is a mixed race queen. I love that. <laughs> Good. Heck yeah. Well, that, that that feels like an exclusive. I don't know if that's a, <laughs> an exclusive, but certainly that's a great headcanon that I don't even, it's not even heck. That's, that's legit, right? That's, that is the actual canon of Adventure yeah. Time as far as I'm concerned. That's great. No, I love that. Well, I, I love that too. Well, I mean, maybe it's just me. I feel like I get caught up like Adventure Time. Like the, I don't know. The world seems like such a crazy place where all of that stuff is top of people's minds right now it's I just know. what's the race what's the gender it's what's so the stupid. this it's, it's like that it's really crazy. has nothing to do with her character whatsoever so it really should not matter but exactly but the people want to know so <laughs> well the, i mean I, if you are a person like that you're you're not getting the point of adventure time at yeah that point. um it's the same well in the same thing again i think watching i think in terms of putting an on-screen cartoon lesbian relationship or bisexual mm -hmm. relationship um adventure time did it in a way where honestly it would like it's just so natural it's not thrown in your face it's not mm -hmm. disney channel five to where they're like you have to accept this as it is it's just the way it happens and i've just never seen a show do something that's so uh con I mean, could be controversial mm -hmm. And like nobody batted an eye, and unless y'all caught a lot of flack that we didn't know, like behind the scenes or later at Comic Cons, <laughs> like I don't, crazy I don't know. Yeah, like crazy parents or something. Crazy parents. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's always going to be the one or two people that are just like cuckoo about that, but I think what the show represents in general, which is very very progressive for especially the time that we came out, was just this concept that like Finn 
was the only human in this world that's filled with vastly, vastly, vastly different people and kingdoms and things. And everybody just coexists and nobody cares like who anybody is. You could be a vampire and love a piece of bubble gum. Mm -hmm. You can be a rainicorn and have a beautiful family with a dog. Like that was just something that was so Mm -hmm. nonchalant and open that everybody is so different in the show, but they're all the same and everyone's treated equally as such except for filthy wizards, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> understandable. Well, so. and I was going to say maybe, maybe except for the, like the only thing I remember in the show that may have been like even relatively close is like the rain of corn dog wars. And yeah, again, but, but, that was kind of, of that introduction a thing of to the that. Past, though. It's a thing of the past. Exactly. So it's like, exactly. Where who is at in society in the current moment of, the series is like what we should strive for i think in, mm-hmm. in our yeah. society and, and her parents loved jake like they were so excited i mm-hmm. mean it just happened to be the case that uh, a dog saved her father right in the mm-hmm. rain corn dog wars so um, that's yeah and also why did my head my head went to uh, a grapefruit could love a lawnmower I, i'm not entirely <laughs> sure <laughs> It is very much in that same vein, isn't it? Yeah, that was so good. By the for way, the, we, for the we both watched it. For the listeners, yeah. if I did not watch Grapefruit until today, so for the listeners, <laughs> Olivia yeah. stars and sings in a short. What is it? A short fantasy film? Like, yeah. how would you classify Grapefruit? Oh man, there's the director painted it beautifully. It's like a surreal, a surrealist comedy musical or something like that. <laughs> that yeah. sounds like That's something great. Jason Siegel was a part of. Right. Oh, right. Um, but no, um, <laughs> Zach, the director of the film, he also was an Adventure Time fan, and that's how he had sort of reached out to me to do the piece. And um, one of the things he said was, I don't think there's a lot of actresses who would understand how weird this is. <laughs> but he's like, but Adventure Time is arguably weirder, so like this will seem <laughs> this will it. seem <laughs> this will seem tame what I'm about to pitch you. And I said, okay, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I love I mean, how he I, pitched it. He yeah. pitched it as this is this is tamer than what you, we know you for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my exactly. my two favorite things about Grapefruit were the stop motion is so cool, so unique, mm-hmm. so well done. For what it just reminds me of, like the like uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and like those old films that were stop motion, mm-hmm. um, and then also your song "You" that you sing and and co wrote, I guess, correct? Uh barely. Um, we barely? had a, okay. <laughs> a that's Jeremy. A Na- that's, an, that's a Nashville rules songwriting right there. <laughs> oh yeah, I was in the I was in the room and I, I was made in the, the room. I, I I wrote my harmony parts. No. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, the, the guy who wrote it, Jeremy Lloyd, is half of Marion Hill, which is one of my favorite uh, bands of all time. Uh, a friend of mine actually put me on to them uh, by telling me, hey, and she didn't know that they were a duo at the time, but she's like, oh, there's this girl, Marion Hill. First of all, her name's not even Marion, it's Sam, but that's another tangent, but um, <laughs> there's this girl, Marion Hill, like her style is so cool. And like, she's like, this is the kind of music that you should be singing. Like, check her out. Uh, fell in love with the band. Um, and I was like, wow, like that, he really would be my like dream producer to work with. And then when everything kind of aligned with Grapefruit, I was like, that's so weird. Like I actually manifested that somehow. <laughs> like so cool. I That's said, incredible. I would, I really wanted to do a song with Marion Hill and then I, I did. So. That's awesome. Well, how, how did you make it happen? Cause I, I saw that it released in 2020. Did y'all do all the recording and filming in, in 29? Cause I feel like yeah. it was either that or it, was it a COVID passion project as well? Or how did that <laughs> no, like, all get we, released? It was supposed to come out literally like in April of 2020. And then we, we're just like, oh man, like as, as with everything, yeah. every, with everything. every dream that everybody had for their 2020 was <laughs> crushed and <laughs> forgotten about. So, um, yeah, we, we filmed that either in the end, I think it was like December 
2018, we actually filmed it. Um, and then of course, because of like the stop motion uh, part of that, they, you know, did a lot of post-production and like animation work for that. So, wow. um, and I mean, how cool is it to have un Uncle Joey Diaz as my fairy godfather? That, that, yeah, <laughs> when I heard the voice, I was yeah. like, that is unbelievable. Where yeah. it's just like a, this hobo fairy. And I was like, yeah. why, why do I know that voice? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was so curious and not to just go straight back to Adventure Time, but I am really fascinated because I listened through uh, Nowhere Land, which is your album from 2018. And... I was wondering what your musical like influences are and if that informed the way that you sang like melodies or the way that you brought music to Adventure Time. Because I know a lot of that was written by like Rebecca Sugar, but mm -hmm. then you're performing, you're you're taking what they wrote and then you're adapting it to Marceline's voice, right? Like, is there like actual musical influences that you have from your childhood or from your present that helped inform how you would go about doing that? And also how you went about creating your own music with Nowhere Land. I mean, that's a big question. Yeah, that was, like, that was like six questions. That was like six questions in one. Could you answer but, all of them one. chronologically, all of, please? All of them with a simple yes. Um, um, yeah. So. Oh, the band Yes is good. I like them. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, stupid. So, I, that's my role with this podcast. <laughs> the, the the bad pun dad joke. Yeah, oh, yeah, very bad. Totally. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up listening to a lot of like my parents' music, which was jazz and, um, you know, rock of the 60s, psychedelic rock time things. So I always really gravitated towards jazz singers and stuff like Ella Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday were always my favorites when I was growing up. And I was like in my high school jazz band which taught me a whole lot more about that kind of style of singing and stuff. So I've always been super like, I, I coined myself a jazz singer, but um, you know, with a little rocker R and B edge. Um, and so I think with nowhere land, you know, I was trying to figure out what my sound was and the way that I sing as Marceline is very different than how I, sing as olivia that I mean, sounds well, weird it, it, no no it it, sh yeah. it shines through like one like you can put on olivia music it sounds 100 percent different than yeah. a, a marceline song you know and i think what's as an artist what i found hard was marrying the two like a lot of people didn't necessarily resonate as much with my personal music because they were so used to hearing me in this mm. very surreal, folky, stripped down, and just like my low register. Like, yeah. I, I would constantly joke when I would get these demos and go in and sing. I'm like, I literally can't even hit these notes, you guys. They're so <laughs> low. Like, the, it was always my lowest, lowest, lowest uh, register. And I, I used to kind of get like frustrated in the, in the beginning seasons of Adventure Time because... I had to remind myself that I was singing as a character rather than like wanting to sing my best or show off in any way or like belt it out. Like I knew yeah. I could, like I was like, okay, that's not Marceline's style though. And I think the first time I went in, the first song I did was like the house hunting song. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm pretty sure Kent was like, Okay, Beyonce. <laughs> like he made a joke. He, <laughs> he, was, he like, was like, "You, you gotta tone it down." Just yeah, to yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> look, this is a one thousand year old vampire who, yeah. you know, isn't a professional singer he was necessarily. Writing these songs off the well, and and yeah. that's what improvised, think, right? It's the I was say, yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, we're the, the, the same thing. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're saying the same thing in the sense of like, yeah, the the tone downness of it mm -hmm. gives it that whole like Marceline's writing she's writing those songs off the top of her head mm -hmm. and so when the perfect bass note doesn't match up with the perfect note you're hitting it's done i feel like it's done on purpose to be like yeah it's all that impromptu feel it's a little dissonant and like as as a singer you hear that and you go oh like some some of it kind of irks your ears especially coming off of a show like phineas and ferb where it's so 
overly produced, almost yeah, like show, high, high production, almost mm-hmm. like show tune level produce, like of how perfect everything is. There are all these like big dance numbers that everyone just breaks out into song. It's a, it's a whole segment in that show. So it was, it was definitely a learning curve to hear back my voice as Marceline, but like as I became more in the groove of that style, like I really learned to love and embrace and like enjoy it. Um, Cause I think that it's just so original to the series, but it like, it just has this special element that does feel really, really authentic. And like, it is just very in the moment, all of her songs. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. I, I feel like for your music, at least for me, as I'm listening through this album, and trying to actively listen, because I feel like it's very easy to put something on in the background and go about, but like, I wanted to focus on as much as I could, you know, and Chasing Your Chances is this song to me that felt like it merged those worlds in such a beautiful way. Like, I was like, this could be like co-written by Rebecca Sugar, in my mind, you know, and I'm not like a, you know, A&R out here walking around, (laughs) whatever, like, oh, let me tell you what you need to do. I'm just saying like, it just, it just felt I don't know. It just felt so raw and so great. And I just, I loved for some reason that song. And then of course, Los Angeles are the two that just like stick out in my mind from that album. Yeah. I think Los Angeles too kind of hits that a little more like stripped down Marceline vibe. But um, I will say the music I'm working on now is sort of an amalgamation of the two because I've been so because I have this like new appreciation for that style, like I'm writing maybe a concept album, maybe a show, maybe a, maybe a show We're we're, we're out here pitching some stuff. So, okay. But it's like, it's very much how those two sounds merge together of kind of this like low fi vibe. Is, yeah, is, is the that's new, amazing. Is the new vibe, you know? It is totally. I, yeah. I was listening to Lo-Fi, like, I, what was it? Anime, whatever, YouTube mm-hmm. channel. I, I, I just <laughs> love that. Like, it just, I mean, it's so same. relaxing, so enjoyable. Like, when also when I'm listening to your music, I'm like, it almost invokes like St. Vincent in a way sometimes where I'm like, oh, this oh, is so cool. I, mean, I don't I, know. I, I, was I love say, St. Vincent. So. When, yeah, when I too. hear like unplugged Billie Eilish, man, that's 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 <laughs> Olivia yeah. and Marceline. That's yeah. that's what you've been doing since 2011, dude. Like <laughs> you've been doing people are like, yeah. isn't she so like, like, oh my gosh, it's Billie Eilish. I'm like, no, that's like Marceline, like lo-fi, cool, like music. <laughs> yeah. Especially like just that low, soft, like heartfelt stuff. Yeah. I love Billie Eilish. Yeah. Well, with your desire to create is another thing I wanted to touch on a little bit. I mean, music for me has fulfilled that in so many ways, right? And and this podcast has as well. But the desire to sit down, create something from scratch, and they go perform it for people is so different, I can imagine, than than doing a voice acting role where you're you're Mm -hmm. voice acting and you're not fully like involved in the entire process, as you were saying, like they were kind of feeding you the lines early on, especially do you you said you're working on a show is this like a, a cartoon show or is this like a show like a, a broadway well, type show or Russell, like what we are we did, talking about we didn't we sign ta- any I ndas man we didn't uh, sign any NDAs. Say nothing. <laughs> like, you could you could say nothing and that's totally okay <laughs> but i i was so curious like what what is next for olivia olsen like where do you feel like you're being led sure well this is definitely a covid passion project i started writing like an original animated show idea um that i'm pitched in a couple places kind of waiting to hear back like i'm in that kind of fingers crossed scenario if it doesn't happen it's going to be a concept album because it's like a totally okay. music driven show mm. that's all i'll give you about that oh, that's um, amazing i love that but it makes me yeah. very excited it makes it <laughs> i hope it, like for the, our fans that are listening out there yeah. too like Again, this is like this is what everybody's been holding on to. This is when <laughs> when distance like, like like when distant lands came out. That was mm-hmm. everybody that was like clinging to. I can't believe it's over and it's finally happening again. Like yeah, Olivia being part of a show that's it, it's gonna feel like just your creative style, your music, your everything's coming through again. It, it doesn't feel like we're 
letting go of adventure time. And yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe that's a terrible thing to be like, don't let go. <laughs> no, and, and it also sounds like a mini series, which I just, yeah. I'm, I'm obsessed with over the garden wall right now. And mm-hmm. that makes me excited if that's what the, it is. I mean, who knows, but a concept album's worth, that's what it sounds like at least. Oh yeah, totally. Um, because I think people want to, you know, they want to hear more, my like number one comment I get all the time is like, when's Marceline putting out an album? And it's like, I can't just put out an album and and give myself the name Marceline the Vampire Queen. Like I'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah. Cartoon Network would sue me if I did that. Straight to jail after that. Um, but, you know, of course I do own the rights to my voice in that sense. So I can still put out music in that kind of style. So I've been writing a bunch of stuff for that, um, which I'm very excited to share, but... But yeah, yeah awesome. keep, keep us updated. Send us demos. We, I, we'd love to hear it. <laughs> send on, us on, demos. Send us, yeah. demos. Send us like pre, pre-release Spotify stuff. You yeah, know. we'll play them on the podcast. Don't even worry <laughs> about it. <laughs> I do have one little, I do have one little snippet of something I posted on my reels. And so I think you could hear that of just me okay. kind of dicking around demoing stuff. But yeah. Well, I love it. Well, I, we'll, we'll go back down into not like releasing your whole uh, next five year plan. Go back to the adventure. Time. I was yeah. going to ask because, I mean, Marceline has so many songs in the show itself. Mm-hmm. Um, did you ever have a favorite where you were like, this is my voice. This is how I would write songs. Did you have one that like you really emotionally connected with? Oh my point? gosh. It constantly constantly changed. I feel like every time there was a new song, I was like, this is my new favorite. <laughs> Because I was just so impressed with it. Um, you know, Rebecca was always really, really personal as well. Um, whenever we would do the songs, she would make it a point because she was never in the records. Uh, you know, we had like our pretty tight knit crew of who was in the room um, while we were filming, recording, whatever. Um, but Rebecca would always come in from you know, her storyboard position in the other side of the building. And she would come in to the booth with me and sit down and be like, here's what I'm thinking. This is how I want you to sing it. Like Marceline is 50% Olivia, 50% Rebecca Sugar, like totally when it comes to her music. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I love that. That's cool. Well, like, so I guess (laughs) is, is the Olivia portion, the, like nice like grungy crunchy <laughs> part of it uh does or does like i don't know like what like when you say the 50 percent olivia is yeah. that like um i don't know like what ask do you do you feel like you give the soft edges to Mar- marceline or like kind of that fun like a fun loving edginess of marceline yeah i think i'm more the fun loving edgy side of her and and rebecca's really the like thoughtful deep sensitive emotional where is she singing this from it's coming from from this point of view like she would always kind of go into detail about like well what I was thinking when I was writing this is that she was feeling this way you know and so I want you to kind of like trail off here because she's sort of having a thought that makes her sad on this line like Mm. when she says this Mm. it really like bothers her so don't sing it perfectly she was writing those like lines to be like hyper like you wouldn't have sang it that way but she was like you have to like really like go down on this note because yeah it's it's a yeah and you definitely hear that like at the end of uh i'm just your problem or at least the recording Mm -hmm. that is on the tv show she gets kind of interrupted but it's certainly her kind of yeah. Oh wait, I didn't mean to say that. Like yeah. that's too personal, sort of a thing. Yeah. Well, that just kind of goes to show how much the writers on the show really cared about, like, the the theme and the point that they were trying to get across in these episodes, and especially with Mark. I would kind of always make jokes. I'd be like, I never get to do anything funny in the show. <laughs> like because it's too serious all the yeah. time. Like everybody else is always getting these really like funny lines that they get to say. And I'm like the straight man that they're playing off of constantly or which every good comedy needs, but um it's like I'm either just the straight man or I'm going psycho demon mode or I'm like super dark and depressed. <laughs> and like I never got <laughs> yeah. any I never really got any of like the funny moments, but like 
that's what makes a show like Adventure Time just so dynamic, I think. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was gonna say they. I feel like they maybe like litmus tested you with the deep aspect of the show. Again, the first thing they kind of introduce is is Simon's backstory and mm-hmm. um, what we're getting to at the end of the season. Again, I think one of my favorite like Marceline episodes is I remember you, which is the whole history of that. And I think they were litmus testing you in in Marceline being this deep character, the only one that wasn't necessarily silly or mm-hmm. ridiculous or hot dog kingdom yeah whatever whatever it is um so you were kind of I, I would say the front runner for this show being like oh we do have this uh cult following audience that wants this deeper aspect that wants us mm-hmm. to present i don't know deep deep concepts uh, hard things to talk about um and yeah. so uh, that's that's fun that you kind of got to be behind the character that again, I would say built a little bit of that like deep fandom. Yeah. And and the way that I played her season one is I think so different than the rest of the series because none of this was given to me in her character description. Like, you know, when we first started talking about this of like, you just get hired onto a show and you're playing the character that you think you're given and like, you can only hope that your series runs for 10 seasons, but like we could have just had that first one and Marceline would have only ever been this kind of like prankster rocker chick, almost antagonist to like mm-hmm. the core crew. Like she was kind of me. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, yeah. It's, it's a mm-hmm. huge, it's a huge change from season one. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. even from one to two, it's a huge change. Yeah. Totally. And but so, I think because she has that character development, right? It's like she's able to lead the way for those deeper conversations because she starts off like kind of a jerk, but kind of flirty in a weird mm-hmm. way with Finn, right? And there's like mm-hmm. these different, very surface level aspects to her. But so quickly, three episodes in, all of a sudden you're, as a fan, you're like, oh, I love this character. Like there's so yeah. much more to Marceline than just being that straight man or, or being the the kind of like weird kind of jerk (laughs) are they going to be friends or not kind of a person you know yeah and so just as an equal fan of the show um and the fan of the writing like seeing what they did with it was just like kind of mind-blowing really because you don't really get that opportunity to be so deep and almost like have this super dramatic theatrical role when you're doing animation so it was just it was really really great to be able to have all of those different facets to her and you kind of see the way that she progresses throughout the series it's like it kind of makes sense why she's like a jerk in the beginning it's like she puts up a front in the front of the series because she has all of this baggage and all of this stuff and she wants to act like this really tough like gritty kind of person and scare jake and like be mean to pb and like all of this stuff but it's like it's because she's dealing with like all this stuff from I mean, her past it's and it, well at, at the point when we meet her in season one too it's it's hundreds of years of that and mm-hmm. i always love kind of the concept of the show and and we're getting into my uh my end of show my <laughs> ned's lessons which are always way too deep yeah. than they should be um but she meets finn and jake and there, there's a turning point, like you said, like it goes from this like rocker, punk, whatever. And then Finn and Jake are the first ones, I think, that maybe see her for the mm-hmm. like who she is. And hundreds of years are either aren't scared, besides, I mean, maybe besides Jake, but uh, Finn sees her for who she is. Yeah. And that kind of like automatically just shreds one layer of Marceline. Um, I think um, something I always kind of thought in the back of my mind about Finn and Marceline's relationship is that he had to have sparked something in her because she grew up at a time like her mom's a human and you know she grew up in the time of this mushroom war and like saw the rise and fall of society and like over and over and over all these lifetimes it's like for her to come across another human however many years beyond that like Finn's existence probably like brought up so much for her that like Mm -hmm. you don't even realize in the beginning because she probably hadn't seen a human in like 
four hundred years or something. Yeah, I mean, at wow. least, at least, yeah. yeah. And it, well, and it's 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 half of her. Like she is half human, mm-hmm. so that is it is a little bit one of those like concepts of just like. So I think that's what um, like attracted her yeah. to Finn and Jake, and like it. She acts like she doesn't really like them at first, but she's like she wants to like be friends with them still. So mm-hmm. it's interesting. Yeah, and I could pull so many lessons even out of that, right? Like, I feel mm-hmm. like there's something to be said about that person that comes into your life and, and pulls out this other side of you that you've been, like, holding back. And so mm-hmm. much of this show revolves around friendships. And I just even feel like if I was to pull right now at the midsection of season four, like, what my lesson is for Adventure Time, it feels a lot like hold on to those, like, close friendships, like, the ones that matter, those people that always have your back, like, they're the ones that you're going to go through this adventure with. And it's kind of the point of this podcast in a way, or it's becoming the point of this podcast of like me and Ned adventuring through life. Despite Your guys' friendship. Moving away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. so much say, yeah, trying like we, to we've been continue with that. This because of this. Uh, then oh, it so you guys, you guys like don't live nearby each other. So this is kind no, of your like no. we, your weekly like yeah. hang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Literally, I, we I started mean, I this. Think, we started this in Nashville together, that, uh, right? Oh, we're talking. Yeah. Sorry, Ned. Well, yeah, we started this together in Nashville, but then he moved away for work, and I I stayed here because um, I just can't give up the dang music industry. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm trying. Uh, not yeah. really. I, I love it. You know, if you're doing music, you're doing it because you love it, and there's no other reason why you're doing it. Um, yeah. But regardless, I was curious. Like, do you have any <laughs> lessons that Marceline has taught you or Adventure Time, but really I, I would just love to know if there's anything that either Marceline has taught you and then also what you want Marceline to teach other people that are watching this as they're going through. Is there any lesson to take away from Marceline as a broader sense? Yeah, I mean, something she definitely taught me is that you just don't ever know what anybody's really going through. And so you have to like live and move with compassion because somebody might, you know, be sort of an antagonist in your life. And that layer to them is a lot of times just the cause of something else that's going on with them that has nothing to do with you. And so she really is like a a, a theme of that, I would say, of like you you would have no idea when you first met her all of this stuff that she went through all of these lifetimes of like pain and trauma and heartache and all of this stuff that she's done. So it's, she's really taught me to just always have that in the back of my mind of being more compassionate towards people. And I hope that other people see that. Yeah, no, I think that's an incredible lesson. I mean, I think that's that's also showed through with Simon. In with Simon, that's, yeah. that's exactly what I was going to say. Is that everybody else like shits on the Ice King, and then mm-hmm. t- until she comes in, and she's like, "Are you kidding me? Like this is an awesome dude. Like you mm-hmm. just don't know what he's gone through." Exactly. And that's the same thing that like again, Marcy's gone through with, mm-hmm. with her relationships too. And I th- and well, I'm already we're, regretting we're, what I said about Simon early on in our show. <laughs> <laughs> I used to give him so much crap. I was like, it was, oh, like, I episode, it was like episode two, and Russell yeah. was like, "This guy's the fucking worst." Man. No, I didn't. I didn't go that far, but uh, you know, <laughs> and I was I also. I don't know if if you're to this point. It's not like a huge spoiler or anything, but I, I also find it really, really sweet that at some point. Finn and Jake completely stop calling him Ice King and they just start Mm -hmm. calling him Simon. And it's like, that's that level of compassion too. It's like, they know him as this evil, perverted, princess stealing weirdo (laughs) that like, oh, Ice King, you're the worst. But then it's like, once they hear a story and learn all of this stuff about him, like they can't even look at him that way anymore. They they grow that same level of compassion for him and they just start calling him Simon too. That's exciting. that's well, the, what was it? We we right just thing. had um, we just had that episode where you know Finn goes into the ghost realm and Ice King's the only one that can see him, oh, um, yeah. and it, we had a whole like part of our podcast was like, dude, we we like you could totally graze over it. That is the first time Finn ever calls him Simon, is oh, when is he that? realizes that um, Ice King can see all these crazy things yeah. in the ghost realm, but he sees them all the time. 
yeah. he like <laughs> runs after him and he calls him Simon because it's the first time he's ever like actually that sucks if this is like what you're going through mm-hmm. like and it's that first real moment where Finn is just like hey like you're not an antagonist you're not my enemy anymore like you will annoy the shit out of me I will keep you at an arm's distance <laughs> yeah. but um like yeah that and, and progressively throughout the show it's I love that as part of Finn's development again. Mm-hmm. We're hoping to get Jeremy on the podcast at, at some point in time because I'd love to see like again te- what he I'm thinks about that. I'm with De- with Dean right now, his dad. I <laughs> so maybe maybe I'll see if if I can Let's do get that. Dean on the no, podcast. No, I love that. Well, I got I got invited to uh, dinner with Jeremy and his wife in Atlanta here, like probably three months ago, and ended oh, no up with way. plans. Um, because he well he's doing his album stuff uh, yeah. at one of these records. And then I've got, we've got a friend who is, she's friends with the drummer that now drums with Jeremy and we were at his oh, last cool. concert. So like I helped put, uh, symbols back in Jeremy's van, but I didn't want to like fangirl over him either and be <laughs> like, please be on the podcast, Jeremy. <laughs> um, but That's at, so yeah, random. Some point, all those like very close levels of separation. So it's such a small world. It's wild. It is. Yeah. It yeah. Is. Absolutely I mean, shoot, I feel like we we owe your mom. We we need to have her on the podcast at <laughs> yeah. some point if we're going to have Jeremy's dad on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. She oh, really did. Fun. She was like, she's like, Liz, did you ever reach out to those people? Because you commented and said, yeah, sure. I was like, <laughs> that is the sweetest like, thing ever. Thanks, mom. I was like, OK. <laughs> no, we really we really I mean, like, like I said, you probably got so much stuff going on right now, too. We just like we love that we get to celebrate our hundredth episode it's not like a random we, we were talking about like oh if we had gotten her on for just like a random flame princess episode it kind of would have been a little weird <laughs> too just to like we've got olivia on but we're not even talking about like marcy in this episode yeah. either. <laughs> right the hundredth um, or the thousandth it's called the thousand year episode or something oh yeah oh, there we go <laughs> I thought Marcy you guys were like, it's a working euros. title, working title. Yeah, this is a working <laughs> Very <laughs> Marceline episode. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I, I mean, w- if you if you ever, for whatever reason, were like and feeling Adventure Time vibes and just wanted to talk about a, an episode, we would be overly happy to have you back anytime. I mean, yeah. it's it's been such a pleasure. Um, and I, it's it was really cool, you know, to, for Ned... With his love of Adventure Time, of course, to have a voice actor on our podcast. And then me, actually, we haven't talked about this much, and I'm not going to go too deep into this, but uh, Phineas and Ferb at a point in my life meant a whole ton to me. Uh, And it's awesome that, you know, you were a part of that as well. So, again, just like the connections, they're just, well, it's great. it's, It's connected even more than you know, because that's how I even got cast as Marceline, um, Ken Ward heard me as Vanessa on Phineas and was like, that's Marsley. <laughs> that's awesome. So, that is awesome. Yeah. So um, and, and, it, it all started there. It all started. And aren't you wow. glad that Phineas. we didn't bring up Love Actually? So we're, we, won't, we, won't, <laughs> we won't talk about that very much. <laughs> well, that, that's where it all really began. That's so. where it all really <laughs> began. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no that's, I can't that's say. Amazing. As we're wrapping up, too, I said, like, my, my final, like, lesson, again, the Olivia and the Marceline lesson is that you're never too old to keep growing. You're never too old to keep maturing. And that's mm-hmm. what I love about – that's what I love about the show. That's what I love about literally every time I hear you on a podcast interview, any of the other characters on a podcast interview. It's, just, it's all this, like, so open-minded, wonderful view of the world of it's just this open book. And we're never too old to keep growing and learning through uh, life lessons and hard times, but learning through kids shows. And it's awesome. Absolutely. So, um, I went back and watched Obsidian, the the HBO Distant Lands one. And now it's just like, oh my gosh, that's like, it's it, so it just good. capitalizes on like, <laughs> yeah. it capitalizes on 10 years of your career, like yeah. in, in like one pivotal moment. Russell, I, I really think I just watched through today. I don't think there's that many spoilers. I think you might have to watch Obsidian. Oh my God. Really? It's like a, it's one big spoiler. <laughs> it, it's it, kind of. Like it's kind of. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it, it, it gives you well, first of all, Marceline has a thousand years of backstory, but like it gives her backstory with like 
her mom's side of things. So mm. I think I think until you build that up and like we don't even start touching on that at all until like season eight or nine, mm. like of where's oh, Marcy's it's, it's, mom? It's so not like, in, yeah, it's it's yeah. not until everything stays in the stakes miniseries where they start kind of introducing that concept. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, this is I'm I'm two years into a podcast and we're only on season four, so I am <laughs> I'll get there eventually. I guess <laughs> we'll get there. I just oh, I just I have like moments and like I'm having moments with you, Olivia, right now where I'm like, oh, I want Russell to like kind of yeah. like, like put the pieces <laughs> together, but. But You're we're probably getting there. We, gonna be the like lo- the, the person that's taken the longest to get through this series. I mean, if you're doing it what once a week, like <laughs> once a week, and the most it's gonna take too. you so long to get yeah, all the I, way yeah. through. I just, it's I long just dropped, and in depth. Every yeah. episode. I just, uh, I just dropped the bomb on you that season five is fifty two episodes, and it was like we're like fifty one episodes. Yeah. I think oh, you're gonna have my to. Life. You're gonna have to start recording like three or four times a week to yeah. like oh get my it going. Gosh. Quit, if we quit have jobs, jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's just, let's just quit right now. With the jobs, it. you know, I'll I'll bring a whole new audience to the podcast. It's gonna it's gonna <laughs> blow up. You'll be able to go. quit. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. Well, hey, you you yeah. have a no show coming up. I'll do my got- wacky voices. You know, let me know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Absolutely, we'll see, oh I'll see what gosh. I can do. Well, hey, <laughs> I mean. We we owe you. I mean, the most we could do right here, right now, is is a plug. What do you want to plug? Like, what is it that you're working on that you just want people to go see, listen to, whatever it is? What is that? Um, I don't know if I can. <laughs> I hate when actors say that, but oh, I no, will be. Okay. I will be guest appearing on a other Cartoon Network series very soon. Mm, um, okay. So keep an eye out for that. And you guys actually hit me on a really good day. I just signed my deal. So I think I can say that I'm doing this, but I'm sure you heard, um, Russ, that Phineas and Ferb got picked back up for two more seasons. We are oh. being rebooted. That's and amazing. I was, oh. I was just hired. I signed my contract today to be a staff writer on the show as well. So what? congrats. That's you. huge. You should have you. You led the whole podcast <laughs> yeah. off with that. That's, oh my that's God. That's the next step. Yeah. Like that is, you know, so, the adventure that keeps going. I love that. I that's know. Amazing. So it really is like very full circle. It all started with Phineas and Ferb, my animation career entirely. So um, I'm really excited to like get on this reboot and have sort of a new adult office but creative job like in this realm it's just really exciting wow that's yeah. that's amazing yeah i mean not again i, I don't know it, it would just be too mellow. i was sick when i was younger right but mm-hmm. i that summer i just dove so deep into Phineas and ferb and it was just such a big part of that summer and and now that i, I can watch dan Pavel Meyer's like videos on tiktok <laughs> and i'm just like he is like the goofiest guy yeah. And of course, he created this like wonderful show, you know. I think his TikTok fame is solely why we got rebooted. So thank you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> thank Actually, you, Dan. thank Huge. you to thank you to his daughters for like showing him what TikTok was. Let's let's give it to them. <laughs> is he that lovely in person? Oh yeah, I was, yeah. I was just at a a nice little get together at his uh, his beautiful house in Pasadena. Uh, <laughs> two weekends ago and it's it's so funny because i know him on such a different level but it's like all of these like famous tiktokers are like hanging out and stuff and i'm like this is so oh weird gosh. this yeah, is so yeah. weird I do at, see at what him. point in the industry did you feel like the old person in the room and that's, oh, that starts to feel weird yeah <laughs> absolutely and i think everybody also just like thought i must also be just like some tiktok person and so like the conversations I was having, they're like, oh, so what kind of content do you do? <laughs> You're like 10 seasons of a show, bitch. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, no, I was like the only, and, and Dan is actually the one who like forced me to get on TikTok too. He's like, it's so great. He's like, you'll blow up. You have to get on TikTok. And I'm like, okay. And like I did, but I'm like, I hate this for myself. I'm just going to go back yeah. to like being a behind the glass, behind the booth. Like, I don't like putting myself in that <laughs> position. Well, hopefully you know soon I mean? in the writer room, you know, like consistently that 
that's what's so exciting. And then, of course, maybe your own show one day and yeah. so on and so forth. Absolutely. Dan made a joke. He was like, he's like, he's like, I sense a lot of Vanessa episodes coming up if you're going to be writing. <laughs> and I said, absolutely. I need money, Dan. What are you talking about? I'm doubling like, I'm gonna down. Get, I'm going to get points on every one of these episodes. <laughs> Even absolutely. if I just come in to say whatever and I leave, like that means I'm writing myself <laughs> into every episode. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah i always found that that ferb and vanessa relationship yeah. thing that they were kind of hinting at or whatever i was yeah. like what is what is going but i loved it i was like what is going on but i love this it's it's so interesting <laughs> anyways well, well uh, just briefly that was it, it kind of started out as a joke because of uh, uh thomas brody sangster who plays ferb was the little boy from love actually and so we both just randomly were cast on this show together oh, man. and so okay. we were like that was just a little fun easter egg for like anybody who knew that to be like oh they do end up together in the phineas and ferb okay universe. i yeah. just yeah. love that ferb is this quiet like awkward character yeah. and he's just like talking to Van like he doesn't say anything and vanessa's just like oh you're kind of cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, that fact too, you just helped somebody win some obscure bar trivia as well. Right? <laughs> there we yeah, go. No doubt. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt about well, that. Thank you guys so much. This was like a blast, honestly. Really fun talking with you. I know. Oh my well, gosh. Like, like Such we a said too, we've, yeah. we've got an, an insane amount of content left to go. Like, uh, we're, like I said, we're on season four, episode 15 at this wow. point. So, Look ahead if you're like season six and hit us up. Be like, we I want to do season six, episode eight. We will like schedule you for freaking two and a half years down yeah, the road. Yeah, I mean, maybe we um, should do uh, I, maybe a, a good Simon and Marceline episode because I feel mm -hmm. like we only barely, we barely scratch the surface on that. So maybe we well, can yeah, do something yeah. like that. I'm, I'm nervous for Russian, Russell's emotional capacity when we get to the <laughs> I remember you episode at the end of the season because it's oh, it's intense. It's, it's It gives the whole backstory. So if you yeah. want to come back, that's going to be in give or take, I guess, um, 15 weeks. Okay. 14, 15, we'll talk about weeks. it later, y'all. Yeah. We'll talk about it later. That, but would, be a pretty, that the... would be a good episode to come in on. I won't, okay. I won't lie. So, Well, literally, anytime, anytime. Thank you so much for joining us. And and also, thank you so much to the people listening and and who have gone with us on this journey. The travelers, y'all are incredible. Uh, yeah. Gosh, I mean, not enough can be said. The fact that people listen to me and Ed talk about uh, a show that we love every just, every week. Just it's listen. Just, just listen to the two of us about anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah seriously. Well, anyways, thank y'all so much. Uh, we'll see y'all again next week, and until then, party forever. Love that you guys. <laughs>